So this chapter um, is uh, based on the package lubricate, which uh, is uh, helps uh, um, just like following tidyverse principles is uh, facilitates working with date and times. Um, so for, first part is how to make a date time object. It can be made in three ways, um, either from a string um, or from, from a full string or from individual date time components. So like individual, like combining weeks, months, hours, minutes like that. So individual date time components or from an existing date time object. So there can be like a one date time object is in a different form and um, it can be converted to another date time object. So creating data a date from string, um, this we can use this YMD function uh, and there are different combinations of YMD functions, uh, permutations of YMD functions. So um, Y is year, month, M is month and D is date. So in this string, we are specifying that we have the year placed before the month and then the date. So we the YMD, the order tells our, how are my components placed. Now this one, you see the order is changed here, 31st, uh, 31st Jan 2017. Um, so again, we change this, we'll use DMY. So our date is before the month, which is before the year. And the output for both is the same because uh, R is converted into a standard format where it goes from the largest unit to the smallest unit. So the year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. Um, and again, this is the third like MDY. So month, date, and year. And you can see all the outputs are same. Um, if if our um, if it's a not a string character, it can still be converted into using um, the same um, YMD. Uh, like um, if it's not within quotes, but here the format strictly has to be ha has to be like this, like without dashes and um, stuff. So here it's just 2017-0131, which it's converting to uh, date time, um, date object. And again, so in the previous slide, we just had, we had no time components. So just like we used YMD, we can, when we have a time component, we can use YMD underscore HMS, which is hours, minutes, seconds. And uh, if if we don't have data till second, we can just use uh, just hours and minutes. So this this function is really very very um, flexible, and you can see that within within the date, it can accommodate thirty uh, first Jan or you know using dashes or using uh, hash. Uh, sorry, uh, backslash. And, and so far the default the time zone is really important. So default, if we don't supply the time zone, it changes that time to UTC. So that, that time is specified in UTC, it just assumes the UTC time zone. Um, but of course we can supply our own time zone using the uh, uh, TZ time zone argument. Okay. Um, so that was one way creating date time from string. The another is creating date time from individual components. Um, so we have a, let me just go to the, this slide is not clear. Let me go to R and do this. Um, so we have a, um, in the, Uh, 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 for this, uh, sorry, for this chapter, we are using NYC flights 13 um, uh, data set, a uh, flights data set from this NYC flights 13 uh, package, which is just uh, 
data of flights leaving, um, arriving and departing from the, this one airport. So I think I'm sharing my screen with you. Are you able to see my R console? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just working on a small screen, so <laughs> adjusting everything. So I have loaded the flights. Uh, let's look at the flights data. Uh, so it has year, month, day departure time, scheduled departure time, arrival time. So it has these different times. But notice this departure time is just a weird time. Like it's just, it's number of minutes probably, which is what it is showing. Um, so we will make, uh, we'll make our own departure time. Uh, it also has the hour minute time. Um, so it has this departure time, but it also has um, data on year, month, day, hour, minute, like this separately. So it's from time, uh, the components of the date time object. So we just select these components. So this is the um, selected data set. And then what we do, we can use make date time to combine the date and time components for a date time object. So, um, we are creating a new variable departure, make date time using year, month, day, hour, minute. So let's see what it does. So now you have a departure um, variable with a date time object. And you can see that, you know, it, it's just combining everything 5.15 to 5 hours, 15 minutes. So this is one way to do it. And yeah, sorry, this uh, slide is just not well done. Doesn't show the whole example, but that's the example that I showed on the console. Um, and then the third form of creating, a third way of creating a daytime object is from other types. So there are some calls that actually give us uh, the date and time. Um, so for example, today, if we just call today, it will give today's date so we can make that into date time as, as date time today or as date now. Um, okay. And then now if we already have, so that was the first part of the chapter was about creating date time objects. If we already, uh, from other forms of uh, objects, if we already have a date time object, we may want to extract components of it. So if I maybe extract a year, month, um, things like that. So there are some, uh, there are these uh, functions that are uh, easy to understand. So year will extract the month, a uh, year, month for month, M day will extract the day of the month y day will extract day of the year um, w day will extract day of the week so monday tuesday wednesday hour will extract the hour minutes and seconds in the when you're when we are extracting the um these um, month or um, weekdays that have their name like you know jan feb march we can specify label equal to true and so it will retain um, that name, like Jan, Feb, March, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But the only drawback is that we'll have to keep it in as project or as date, right? It will be, yeah, it will be still a date time. 
yeah uh-huh. and also that it has to be like as uh, the it should be converted to as project form or as date form it cannot be in any format like d uh, d d m m y y it can't be in that format it has to be y y y m m d d right whenever we are using all these functions year month oh weekday. yeah 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 uh, yeah yeah i i think so yes 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 in in this like in the example that's true that's true um all that's my guess but you have more experience aditi in the example in the books it's using like it's using through pipe so it is already converted in the previous step in the default okay 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. um so for example um here in this example i have uh, so to notice the departure time um in the data set was weird like it was not it was like just a integer um so we will make that into a date time object using um make date time year month day and departure time so for our and minutes we are just using the departure time and then we can uh, I'll, i'll just do this <laughs> in console because again my slides are not clear um so this is the same example uh, Okay. Now, from the data set, we are uh, we are extracting the month um, month is departure a uh, month from the departure time. Um, we just want to see the count of flights in each uh, month. So that's that's just the ggplot command to do that. so this is just to show one example of where you would want to extract a comp component from the date time component and because we said label equal to true if we had not done label equal to true then it would probably uh, it would just give 1 2 3 4 actually let's just try that uh label equal to false oh okay so yeah it's just giving this weird uh making this into some <laughs> integer category um so yeah so when you're extracting label equal to true is just then you have your categories yeah okay um three okay um then there are some functions we may want to uh round our date and time to the nearest unit um so there are different functions just like we have for uh, numbers um we can do floor date um uh, floor underscore date which round rounds it down to the nearest unit um which is smaller um then round date which will which will just round out to the nearest unit smaller or bigger and ceiling date will round up to the nearest round up to the nearest unit so if you have something in between feb and march and your unit is month if you fl- do flow a floor underscore date it will go back to feb it will assign it to feb if it if you do um round underscore date it will pick which one is the nearest and if if you do ceiling underscore date then it will go instead of feb it will go to march um these uh, these uh, um images are from the our um the cheat sheet our studio cheat sheet for lobelet and then there is time spans so time spans is when we can where we can do math with data like adding number of days calculating age you know like the uh, death death minus birth uh, like um longevity or life expectancy or just age like today's date minus birth date so it's just like math with date and time objects so i found this very is quite confusing so if you have more experience um with it please 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 comment or Uh, you know explain things better if you have experience with it so um 
time spans can be uh, in periods. Um, there are three three kinds of time spans objects that are uses. So the first is uh, periods, um, and these are all um, again from the cheat sheet. These visuals are not in the chapter. Um, so this is what a normal day looks like. You know, uh, you have one hour after the other, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. Um, if at the start of daylight savings, when you spring forward, the timeline disconnects. Um, so you don't have the time between two and three, you just go from your clock changes to two and like that it changes to three. Um, when you fall back, end of daylight savings, uh, you have an overlap. So you have, um, you go to from one to two and then again, your clock goes to one. And so you have that extra one hour. Um, and then, you know, this is a leap year sort of timeline. But periods uh, is it tracks changes in clock times which ignore timeline ir irregularities. Um, so, so if you have the like the period object, um, it uses uh, it will not take into account this uh, this gap or this overlap. It will just count you know minutes, ninety minutes from your starting point. Um, so it uses human time constructs like week, days, months. Uh, and so it's more appropriate for things like leap year, daylight savings compared to the next uh, duration. This, I'm, I'm sorry, this I, I, I don't understand. I made this presentation a few months back, so I don't know why I added that there. Um, if you have more, in, if you understand this, please let me know. Um, so how do you use the periods object uh, type of object? Um, so if if uh, I I give seconds and 15, uh, it will be 15 seconds. Um, days and seven, it will convert it to seven day, zero or zero minute, zero seconds. Weeks, three. So it's like what time, what period is the three weeks? That, that's how I read it. 21 days, zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. Uh, so it's using human time construct in contra uh, um, sorry and then we can do arithmetic so that's the whole point of time span that we can do um, math on it so six months plus one day into 10 is 60 months 10 days so the output here is always in human readable format um, so i keep saying human readable format because when you go to duration, so that's the next time um, span duration, it's always in seconds. So notice here we have a period like a block of time. Here it's counting the seconds. So it's just like through those round circles. Um, and, and we get duration. So um, in time period, for periods, we were using the, oops, sorry. In time periods, we were using seconds, days, weeks. Um, for duration, we use add a D. So D days, so duration of duration days, duration months, duration years. So just so basically, what is the duration like in one one day? And the output will be seconds. So you can also think of this is like how many seconds are there in one day? How many seconds are there in two months? That's the output how many seconds are there in 0.5 years? Um, so that's output. So output here is, it's always measuring in seconds. It doesn't care about daylight saving or you know any, any, any other thing. It's just, or, or leap year or something. It's just, it's just measuring seconds. Um, and again, uh, we can do uh, math the same way, two into duration of weeks and the, your output is in seconds. So today plus D days one, this gives you, this gives you a date, okay. Um, and then the next thing is intervals. Uh, so intervals represent specific intervals of the timeline bounded by start and end date times. So, 
um, both periods and duration, we are just like, we are um, tracking change in time, but there is no end time. Um, here there is an end time. So we are looking at, uh, it's a bounded, bounded time. Um, so that whole confusing part, I wanted to share this with you. So Aditi, you may have, you may have already seen this. This is uh, Sylvia Canalona's uh, teaching exam on time intervals in Lubridate. And uh, this, she has this beautiful uh, flowchart um, concept map of time spans. So I wanted to share this with you because this, this one <laughs> um, flowchart is just so much more useful than either the cheat sheet or the Blueberry Date chapter. Uh, and this is just, um, I find it more helpful in understanding the time span. So just like the um, slides that I showed. So this is a summary of that. Um, so lubricate facilitates working with time spans. Um, we are thinking of time spans whenever we're thinking of doing math with dates and time spans can be durations, which we just went through exact number of seconds. So duration is exact number of seconds, um, period, Periods have no fixed length in seconds, but remember it uses uh, uh, human understandable like uh, uh, formats, so weeks, days, months, those. And time span can also be intervals, which is the which gives you the length um, uh, of time spans. Um, both periods and intervals can um, ha will have human units of time. They utilize human units of time. Um, and periods are more intuitive than durations because durations are just like exact number of seconds. Um, and they both are, uh, can be created by constructor functions. Um, so we just saw that for durations, we have D years, D months, D weeks, which will give us the seconds. So 600 seconds or, so they'll create examples like this. Um, periods will have, uh, again, this similar functions, but without the D. So years, months, weeks, uh, which will create examples like 10 minutes, zero seconds, 24 hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. Um, and intervals have start points. So for intervals, we have to specify. So notice here, we are not specifying any um, uh, the time bounds, um, but here we have to specify the start point and end point. Um, and the periods, they enable accurate uh, measurements, more accurate measurements. Um, I guess that, yeah, depends on what your use case is. Um, so the format for uh, uh, intervals is uh, start point, starts point, and then percentage dash percentage end point, or you can use the function interval start point, end point provide the start point or end point. And in this lesson, she goes through, um, so I'll share this link and um, my link of the pre presentation and that has this link. Um, this is like a 15 minute lesson that she has designed for the, her R studio training exam. And this lesson focus on, focuses on um, intervals. So the time bound um, length. Um, and they're lo just looking at Nobel laureates um, and their Nobel Prize award and figuring out if the Nobel Prize was given during the life or after the death of the laureate. Um, so, yeah, so this is, uh, I haven't gone through this, ex this exercise yet, but I thought it would be useful to go through that um, um, go through this flow chart to understand time spans. Um, and that's all I have today. Um, any questions or comments? I think uh, this is a matter of fact, I want to tell. Uh, uh, tidy versus now really one more package also with, with date and time objects. Okay. Uh, it is called clock. Uh, for example, uh, let me share one, just one line of code. Try doing this uh, muted slides. 
date two equal to date plus months into bracket one. Uh, if you run this kind of code, it will run error. It will give silent NA uh, in some of the data objects. For example, when the uh, date is uh, 31st January and you add one month to it, what should it do? In that case, it will run into error. Uh, it will give you NA because 31st uh, February is not uh, possible. Mm. So uh, this clock package deals with this in a better way. If it is a invalid, what to do? It will okay. specifically okay. ask yeah. you. Yeah. It's like so try formats project, right? We have try formats as a parameter in as project function where you can give, if you don't know exactly what uh, format your date time is stored in, you can give a range of it and then it will select the correct one. Right? Okay. I think clock has the whole database of uh, all the time. And the yes. corresponding time, yeah. Yes. So does it, does it take into, so if we just try to do it in the, in Lubri date, then um, it doesn't know when the uh, like the uh, uh, sorry the spring forward or fallback is happening or doesn't yes. it doesn't it doesn't ha know the inconsistencies in our timeline right and clock has that is it like is that the difference yes uh, in okay. clock package uh, you have option if it is invalid then invalid equal to previous or invalid equal to next or invalid equal to overflow or in invalid equal to NA. There are four options. If the answer is invalid, then what to do? Uh, either you can uh, fall back to the original date or you can go back to next uh, possible date or overflow means, for example, uh, if your original date is 31st January, then should it uh, overflow to March? Mm. Or yeah, should yeah. it give you an NA? You have to specify it uh, uh, explicitly. Right, right. Okay. Oh, this is very new. 31st March. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it's not integrated. And they have uh, specified. Yeah. Lubridate is not going anywhere. Lubridate will also exist. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think more development will go into clock package now. Clock, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is very useful. Thank you. Welcome. Aditi, do you have more in comments and insights? Which ones do you, because you work with date and time all the time. Uh, yeah. What I do usually you use? use Zoo, XPS, Lubridate, whatever makes my work easy. But uh, mm. sometimes when like in apps and all, if uh, I try to stick to one because you cannot put a lot of uh, functions there. So I either stick to Zoo, uh, which is uh, a little more simpler than Lubridate. Uh, but okay. uh, what, yeah, otherwise Lubridate is also good. And now uh, that I, I also saw Clock recently. So, and it's tidyverse. So it's very easy to pipe and make things shorter. I might shift to Clock, I think. And then okay. maintain the package also, right? So they keep maintaining, upgrading. So, and there'll yeah. be a lot of help because a lot of people uh, become authors of, tidy, have become authors of Tidyverse. So this will also have a lot of authors and go-to people. I might shift to clock. I don't know. Because the uh, the example what Malik gave, 31st Jan, if you hmm. just want to keep adding periodically a month and check how it's going, then I don't want to uh, jump into an error and I don't want to write a code to see if it's a leap year and then uh, check all these things. So I might move to clock. <laughs> yeah, actually it will be interesting to do the exercises with clock then for this yeah. chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, can we do the same exercises with clock package also? It would be you an have, interesting exercise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, we'll have to. I mean, uh, if you all have time for next week, we can try doing that. Yeah, I will try doing uh, using clock. Let's see how far I get. But um, if you 
have the enthusiasm and you want to do it then definitely let's do it yeah that will be great do you use aditi do you use time spans uh no i don't i don't okay. i have used uh, yeah no 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 i do have not used time spans yet mm. um honestly i found the r studio cheat sheet very confusing like usually r studio cheat sheet is so clear uh in the yeah. visualization and stuff and maybe it is just coming from because i don't work so much with timelines i i don't actually work at all so maybe that is just uh, i don't get it <laughs> but it, it the cheat sheet didn't make it easier to understand that um and when i finally saw uh, silvia's uh, tutorial that at least yeah. helped me with the framework that okay this is Correct. this is how everything uh, works together yeah that is a, that should be converted to a cheat sheet soon even it, i it uh, be... yeah yeah it is super useful anything else no thank you so much and uh, yeah we'll continue with date and time next if we are planning to meet yeah yeah let's let's do the i think we can uh, try to do the exercises and use clock as well and see how that works molik thank you so much for uh, mentioning that welcome all right um take care everyone stay safe see you next yeah, week you stay safe you all take care yeah. bye